continuing geometry APAC. This is our converse of the Pythagorean theorem. As we had talked about, Pythagorean theorem is a theorem, therefore it has a hypothesis and a conclusion. If we want to look at the converse of that theorem, then we swap those two. In other words, if I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then those sides can be represented as a, b, and c, where c is the hypotenuse in a right triangle. In other words, if these numbers fit this scenario, then it must be a right triangle with C as the hypotenuse. So if A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the triangle must be right. We could apply that here to say, if I know that the three sides of a triangle are four, five, and six, is the triangle a right triangle? I can put in four, five, and six, noting that the biggest one is over here, the hypotenuse. 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. When I combine these two, I get 41, which is not equal to 36. Therefore, it's not a right triangle. We can apply that to these three scenarios as practice. Three sides of a triangle are 7, 8, and 9. Okay, 9 is the biggest one, so I'm going to say 7 squared plus 8 squared may be equal to 9 squared. I put a question mark on top of it. That's not official math notation, but I think it's helpful. So 49 plus 64 is maybe equal to 81. So that's 113. That's not equal to 81. Therefore, not a right triangle. I can try it with 6, 8, and 10. Ooh, wait. 10 is out of position here. So I have to remember to write 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. The biggest one has to be over here. 36 plus 64. We don't know if this is true is equal to 100. Ah, 100 is equal to 1 for 100. Therefore, so yes, it is a right triangle. Third scenario, 3, 5, and 7. So I would say 3 squared plus 5 squared is equal to 7 squared. I don't know if that's true yet. 9 plus 25 is maybe equal to 49. 34, no, that's not equal to 49. So not a right triangle. That takes care of page 4.